Hello beautiful babes, thanks for coming back for another video. I know it took a smidge longer than I had initially expected, but I'm great at procrastinating, so those are one of my finer skills that I have. Um, thanks for coming back though. We're talking about the Blair Witch today, uh, just in time for Halloween, and we're gonna do this really cool vampire look, which I included the teeth and the contacts to, you know, give you a very much a, I know, kind of thing. It's a vampire. That's what we're going for. So stay tuned. Let's get ready and let's talk about the Blair Witch. After... Oh goodness. So the legend of the Blair Witch came around after a whole bunch of like weird things started happening around this lady and her name was uh, Ellie Kedward, and I really want to call her Kelly Edward, but it's Ellie Kedward, and that is so confusing. Ellie Kedward, not Kelly Edward, but I'm probably going to mix it up, so, you know, it's okay. We don't have to talk about it. Ellie Kedward, um, she was believed to have been practicing witchcraft in her, like, little cottage in the woods, and, you know, that did not fly back then, because we're talking this was happening, like early 1800s and people were not down for that. Um, uh, the description of Miss Ellie Kedward was a woman who was like covered in black fur, so, you know, she was cozy in the winter time, that's fun. Um, and then, like, she was, like, hide herself under a wool shawl. So I guess maybe she wasn't so warm in the wintertime. I don't know. But she was just a real furry lady. Uh, she also had really long, like, stretched out limbs, and we'll talk about why that happened in a bit. Um, but she was actually banished in 1785 because of the witchcraft that people were like, ooh, she's doing bad things, she's a witch, we gotta get rid of her. So, you know, all that fun junk was happening where people were just like, you're a witch, dead, not cool. Okay, guys? So, anyway, um, and as part of her banishment, you know, they decided to hang Miss Ellie Kedward. Um, but when they hung her, it wasn't like a normal hanging, which, you know, not a good thing to begin with but like when they hung this lady from the tree they also like attached a bunch of stones to her limbs and that's why she's described as a woman with really long limbs because it stretched her out which is extra spooky i'm gonna have some scary dreams tonight um then after like after they hung her the people who had accused her of being a witch started to die uh, including like the children, um, I guess like half of the children in the town of uh, Blair Town started to disappear, and you know the people were like, "Uh, we may have goofed real bad." So they all started thinking there was a curse on the town, um, which meant made all the people like leave because they didn't want their kids to go missing, but also like don't accuse people of being a witch and then like hang them in the most brutal way possible. So, um, after all that happened, she was hung, like, all bad and stuff, everybody left the town, and then, uh, it was abandoned for a while, but then in 1824, the town was rediscovered, and it was renamed Burkittsville as it is now. Um, then, in 1825, the people were like, yeah, this is a great place to live, let's hold an event. So they held their first ever harvest, uh, wheat picnic and um 10 year old girl her name was eileen turkle um well little miss eileen just wandered off into the woods which you know woods are cool but like it was sketchy um but she disappeared and she realized that she'd gotten lost um after she wandered away, like, her parents were like, where did she go? Well, Eileen fell into a shallow river just outside of the town. 
and apparently there were 11 people to have witnessed this little girl get pulled into the river um, by like a, a, a ghastly like white hand is what they describe it as. Um, uh, after searching the creek bed, riverbed, or whatever it was, they couldn't find her body. Uh, they never did. Um, but after she died, because they didn't find her, um, and this was like the main water source for the town, like the animals and the people would drink out of it, uh, they started getting really sick from drinking out of it. Uh, and then other people started to die and the animals started to die. Uh, for 13 days after she disappeared, like, just got real spooky and everybody started getting really sick. Um, uh, then, I guess a man who drank the water... Oh, wait, I already... Oh, one man did die. So I guess the rest of them were just getting, like, really sick from it. Uh, then, you know, things like calm down for a while, which was great. Uh, they got to live in peace, everything was good, kids were fine, but then in 1886, 61 years later, um, Robin Weaver, another little girl, just playing out in the woods again, which, I mean, like, there's nothing really to do back then, I guess, in a small town. Uh, so why not play in the woods? I still play in the woods, I guess. So, I haven't come too far. But, uh, Robin Weaver, who was eight years old at the time, wandered away again. She made herself, made her way into the woods, and Robin met up with a little lady in the woods, because she got lost. I don't know. I guess if you're super lost and you suddenly see a person, sure, I guess you might trust them. Especially if you're eight. I wouldn't have like, nope. Oh good. I don't nope. I don't even talk to people in grocery stores though, so I guess that's not saying much. Uh <laughs> but I guess the woman was really nice to her, which is kind of I guess why she went with her and she followed her to like a, a little cabin super deep into the woods, uh uh, which I guess it was an abandoned cabin and it had like a basement, which is spooky. Uh, and Robin went in with her. This is where we need to pause for a second. Anybody tries to lead you into their house, no. I don't want to go with you. Thanks. End of story. Don't follow strangers into their homes. Cool? Cool. Glad we're all on the same page right now because Robin's lucky. Um, but. So after this old lady led her into the house, she led little tiny Robin down into the basement. I guess Robin was like, okay, cool, I'll follow you. Um, and the lady was like, you just wait here, I'll come back in a little bit. Robin was like, sweet, okay, cool. Well, Robin waited for a really long time for this lady to come back. And um, it started getting like kind of late and dark outside and Robin was like, well, I don't know if I should have done this, it might not have been a great choice. So she starts panicking and she was like stuck in the basement so she crawled out a window in the basement. Um, and then she ran away uh, back to Burkittsville. Uh, but while this is happening, luckily Robin's grandma was like, uh... No one seen my granddaughter in a while. Maybe we should go look for her. And the town was like, oh my goodness, she's eight years old. We shouldn't let an eight year old just wander off. Let's go find her. So a search party went out to go look for Robin. Um, technically, I guess it was two search parties because one of the search parties went out to a place called Coffin Rock. Real ominous, kind of cool. Um, but I guess the Blair Witch was like, oh, they're looking for this little girl. And I can only assume this, but, you know, I think the Blair Witch was trying to, like, eat these little kids. Um, but she was not happy. There was, like, a group of men searching for her. 
So she went crazy and she killed them all and dismembered their bodies and just like left them laying out on the rock. Um, well, after that, the witch was like, yeah, I did great. They're never gonna find this little girl. So she went back to the, the house with the basement because she was gonna finish the job there. Probably kill the little girl. But Robin had already gone out the window. And you know that did not fly with the Blair Witch. So Blair Witch was crazy. She went back out. She got really angry. She went back to where she murdered all those dudes in the search party. And she dragged all their bodies uh, into the woods so the uh, other search party could find them. Uh, yeah, so well, that's the first little bit of the spookiness. But then, the, I mean, like the town got another break. Cool. So in 18-1940, which was not this point, we do not want to use that. I know I got the colon eyes going on, but we do not want to sparkle that much. <laughs> 45 years later, a man... Hold on. I have a hair in my nose. Don't follow strangers. Especially scary old women in the woods. Even if they're nice to you. Anywho. Um, 45 years later, a local man who lived in Burkittsville, his name was Russ, yeah, Rustin Parr. Kind of sounds like one of those like new age kids names that you meet at like a school and they're kind of cool. Uh, but R Rustin Parr wasn't cool. He was the local hermit and he lived like on the outskirts of town, didn't really have any friends and people were kind of weirded out by him. They were like, meh. Like, He's the kind of guy like you pull your kids away from on the street because you're like, ah, you know, he's shady. So you didn't bring him over there. Um, but Rustin was... Uh, apparently he saw Miss Ellie Kedward and she told him to do bad stuff. So Rustin started abducting the local children in the town. Um, yeah, not cool, Rustin. Don't take the children. Uh, and you know what? This is probably where it came from because Rustin, in order to get these kids to follow him, he offered them candy. So I guess we'll pause for another public service announcement, y'all. Someone offers you candy you don't know them. I know this is like a terrible thing to say because tomorrow is Halloween or today is Halloween whenever I post this. That's the one exception. Let your parents check your candy too because you never know. Some shady people out there. But anyway, Rustin used that to get the kids to follow him. He was like, hey little kid, you want some candy? And the kids followed him. They did. I guess the rule wasn't a big thing yet yeah, is probably, this probably is where it came from because darn Rustin leading the kids into his creepy hermit house in the woods with some candy. Well, I guess like he would like, I, and nobody noticed this was happening. Well, they knew their kids were going missing, but they didn't know Rustin was the one taking him because they were, he was just like a town weirdo. Um, but I guess like people at night could hear him like screaming in the woods and stuff. Ugh. So I mean like that should have been like clue one that that guy might have been kind of shady and like, you know, check him out because he's uh, stealing all your kids with candy. <laughs> um, goodness, hold on. Okay, uh, so obviously Rustin did not have good intentions when it came to the children. I did not bring my eyeliner. Hold please. All right, anywho, sorry, I found my eyeliner. Decided it was a terrible idea to try and apply it while it is on camera because you just have to sit there and like watch me awkwardly try and figure out if I could do this properly. It got a little thick. It's okay. 
fun. We'll go with it. It's a spooky holiday, plus, you know, this is just what I always look like. Minus contacts and fangs some days, most days. Um, anyway, back to it. Rustin, shady hermit in the woods, leading kids into his house. And we were talking about how he was shady, and you know what? He didn't have good intentions, because, you know, and it's because he said that Miss Ellie Kedward, not Kelly Edward, uh, told him to do this, but he murdered these children that he let into his home, um, and he kept it, like, obviously they were gonna figure it out quickly who was doing this stuff, uh, whoa, calm down, um, but for two whole days, no one knew where these kids were going, and it took him two days, that was all, to murder seven little kids. Um, and he managed to keep this a secret because he, um, just like kept them in his cellar, which is like a, like a basement, but not a basement, if you don't know what it is. Uh, he hid them down there. Uh, and I guess, like, the whole reason this occurred was because he had a, a dream that the Blair Witch, or Ellie Kedward, came to him. And she, well, this was after the initial, like, where she told him to go and get these kids and kill them all. Um, and I guess after his two days stint of being a kid murderer, Ella, Ellie came back and she was like, okay. Thanks for doing that for me. Now, if you would like to feel at peace again, because, you know, probably didn't feel so, feel so good after that, um, she told him that he would have to admit what he had done. So, you know, the local, I don't know, town detectives or whatever were going back then, um, Still hadn't figured out where these kids had gone. But Ellie Kedber was like, it's time. Let's tell everybody what you've done. And he was like, okay, cool, dream lady. It's a good choice. Which, you know, probably is a good choice. And the families were able to figure out what happened to their kids. Um, so Rustin frantically ran into the town. And he was like, I'm finished. And at first, people were like, I don't, what? what? And they're like, he's a crazy guy. Um, the police there in the town were like, maybe we should check this out. Um, and they went to his house and then down into the cellar. And down there, they found the bodies of the seven kids that he killed. Um, uh, he was obviously immediately found guilty of what had happened. Uh, and I guess he didn't, I don't know if it was the piece he wanted or what, or what he thought he was going to get out of the whole situation, but they executed him. Um, and as they were doing so, he was saying he was only doing what the lady in black had told him to do. Um, and he was executed then in 1941 which i honestly not that long ago not that long ago those <laughs> dry for a second so those are like the main legends that you can hear about and then obviously there is the blair witch film which huh, i have seen like twice i've never seen the second one because well, that first one, the filming, which I'll give it to him. It does look like a bunch of panicked teenagers had filmed something, but whoo! Sometimes you just can't handle that kind of stuff. And by you, I mean me. I cannot handle that kind of stuff. But anyway, you know, that's the, the film where, um, I think it's like a group of like three people go into the woods. I think they're like college students doing a project on this Blair Witch. Um, 
Mm. Their friend convinces them all to go camping out in the forest where the Blair Witch lives so they can make this documentary and they start asking all the townspeople and they're giving all these stories and like not finding out good stuff which obviously they already knew before going into it but then like strange things started happening and I remember like a uh like a big part of the movie that like freaked me out was when the girl had woken up and like I think it was like her boyfriend and you know I probably shouldn't be giving a review on a movie I haven't seen since I was like 13 years old but hey I'm not looking to get motion sick I remember main parts that's what counts also I guess if the second one is any good let me know and I guess I can try it um, but anyway, like the lady, she like woke up the next morning, realized her boyfriend wasn't around and she like looked outside her tent and I remember like there was like this flannel like all wrapped up outside of her tent and she opened it up and it was like body parts and it was like the scariest thing when I was like 13. I was like, oh, what? And, you know, I guess I really haven't been camping since and maybe that's because I'm worried that somebody's going to leave like a a flannel full of body parts outside of my tent. <laughs> Sorry, I think I'm funnier than I am. But then like, after her friends all die and stuff, she like, panics and runs further into the hall, please. Okay. Anyway, she like runs into the woods. I know it was like a horrible time for a break, but I just, like decided that between the vampire teeth and lip liner, I just was not gonna be able to do that successfully. And I still think it went kind of weird. Um, but she like ran into the woods and then she found the house where the Blair Witch was like living or lived, I guess, cause technically she was dead and she's like a evil spirit at this point. Uh, and she literally like went into the house and there was like all those like scary sigils on the wall. Like, that should have been your first indication to not go further into the house, but then I remember, like, she went down into the basement. We talked about that. We talked about that. Robin got away, but the girl in the movie was not so lucky because I remember there was, like, a lot of shaking and it was really dark and then all of a sudden, like, screaming and stuff and scared me. It scared me. It probably doesn't scare me anymore. Like if I were to watch it again, I'm like, like, this is goofy. But from what I remember, it was terrifying. <laughs> you know what I love that. Hold on. I gotta clean this up. We're a vampire. We're supposed to look cool. Something is gonna stay in my face for sure. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. So like she dies, and that's how the movie goes. So maybe I should see the second one. Is it like a, a prequel or is it a sequel? I don't know. I didn't try and watch it because the first one freaked me out when I was 13, and then I remember it being really shaky and motion sicknessy, and I was not feeling good again. Anyway. That's what we know about the Blair Witch. And like, yeah, that was pretty spooky. So, lessons learned, here we go. Let's go over it. If someone's practicing witchcraft in the woods, leave her be, let her do her thing. She's not bothering you. You didn't need to hang her from a tree, not called for. She didn't need to kill your kids. That was uncalled for, not the way to react. Oh. Both parties lost, obviously. Uh, what else did we learn? Don't follow strangers. Okay? Like, in two sorts of ways, don't follow the old lady in the woods who's being nice to you because she's going to try and eat you. Pretty sure that's what the intention was. Also, don't take candy from strangers. Unless it's Halloween and you let someone check your candy to make sure... That the strangers aren't trying to hurt you, okay? Anyway, this is the final look. We're a cute little vampire. We got the teeth. We got lipstick on our teeth. It's really extra cute that way. 
We got the contacts, we got the red lipstick, we got this cute little cat eye. We're feeling good. Also, the sweet nails. These are not required for the vampire outfit. None of this is even required. You can do whatever floats your boat, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> if you like the video and you want to see more from me, because we're doing great, um, let me know what legend we should talk about next. We'll find some stories. We'll do some makeup. We'll have some fun. Um, subscribe down below. Like the video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!